Hello, I am Rachel Jordan and I am a painter. I have been in this wonderful airy spot here at Ava for a little over 30 years. Um, when I first moved in, I shared the space with three other people. Um, they didn't stay um, for very long. And uh, then I shared the space with other people uh, sporadically and then in more the last 10 years, I've been sharing the space with my husband, Jim, who's also a painter. Um, I was attracted to this space um, because as you might sense from the uh, video, it's a north light studio. And I think painters over time have gravitated to north light studios because um, light is very, very important to painters, um, particularly painters who are interested in color, like I am, because you're very in, impacted by the um, nature of the light. And, um, and the north, north light is sort of evenly uh, cool light throughout the day. Um, and you're not having to deal with uh, the warm light that you would get in the, in the afternoon, particularly um, in a, you were in a Western studio. As an artist, how do you approach finding inspiration for your work, especially during times when you may feel creatively challenged? I, I, I do struggle with what to paint. Um, I often you know, start with a still life, but I will, I think, imbue the still life with you know, something more than just being crockery. Um, maybe some allegorical, you know, element to it. And a lot of times you'll have some idea to start with, but it will evolve and uh, over, over the long period of creating a, a painting. But it, it's something, um, right now I think I'm concentrating more on learning how to compose better and make stronger paintings. And when I maybe, Get through this period a little more I'll, I'll think more a little bit about what I'm wanting to say in the paintings. What advice would you give to aspiring artists who are trying to balance multiple interests and passions? Um, well um, I, I guess a little bit of my history I, I did have multiple passions I've, I've always been supposedly like a what you call a, a double major and I, I was a double major in college, and I measured, ma I majored in physics and in painting. And I'm passionate about both of these endeavors, and I didn't ever, you know, try to combine them too much, but I followed both of them. Um, and when I, after I'd been in my uh, professional career as a scientist, I, I worked um, at Krell, uh, it's just the cold regions lab out on Lime Road. Some people might be familiar with it. Um, I was able to work there only part time, maybe three days a week, which allowed me to have more more time in the studio. So I think you can have two or even three things, and I would encourage younger people to just go for it. And you can juggle it, and uh, if you put your heart into it. I mean, people will be supportive um, and, and, and make allowances so that you can do more than one thing. Um, this is a sample of the types of work I've done. I've done many types of painting in the studio, but what, when I first was in here, I was really drawn to the um, wonderful scene you have out the window here. Um, and so I did a lot of landscape paintings, and this is an example um, on the right of a landscape painting. And then I also then later began to add to that uh, working with still lives. Um, part of the, my process in painting um, involves a lot of revision. And in order, you know, I, I sometimes get stuck in my paintings and Part of the reason you get stuck is part of it you really like and you're afraid of ruining that or losing that. And so to trick myself, I put a piece of tracing paper over the painting and then make another version. And so I'll often, and these are both tracing paper versions, and, uh, and, and, and this is in the still life genre. Awesome. These are four paintings, um, and the 
first and the third painting were in a show um, that I had with seven other people. Um, we belong to a critique group together. I might talk later a little more about uh, how that critique group operates. So the first and the third paintings were from that show, and those are completed paintings. Um, preparation for that show also involved the uh, COVID period. In fact, our show in the downstairs gallery was one of the first shows at AVA um, after, you know, at when COVID began to subside. Um, and during that period, I moved home out of the studio, although many people didn't. But we're, my husband and I are now in our 80s, and we were very concerned um, about getting sick. So um, when I was at home, it was, it was different because I was surrounded by a lot of things. Um, I have a, I'm a person who's very sentimental, and I like to collect things and objects and uh, particularly those with family meeting, meanings. And this painting that's on the left here, um, <coughs> I have two dressers, my parents' dressers are in the bedroom. And the studio um, at that point was in, in the, our, our large master bedroom. We vacated that for my studio. And, and actually my husband Jim was painting in the living room. But this was my mother's dresser, so it had a lot of significance for me. And, you know, the two globe lamp was um, a family heirloom. And on the, le on the left side are heirlooms from Jim's mother's family. And um, I worked, a, you know, a long time on that painting, just like I do on most of my paintings. And it had several versions and several tracing paper versions. And this painting finally seemed to come together. Um, and the other painting over here on the, um, the third painting was sort of my response to COVID. Um, it, it started out with a, uh, not as a still life, but I had seen a cycle. It was a deluge cycle that I saw in Florence. Um, I can't remember the painter's name right now. It wasn't a really well-known uh, Florentine painter. But I started out with a deluge scene, and, a, and then it sort of evolved over the time. And I, I had these broken objects, the, um, the chicken from sweet tomatoes that is on the floor and, and broken. And I asked the person to give me this broken picture, and she did. And then I, I had come across a box of, of horses that my son had made in grade school um, in the basement. And I, it was sort of all wrapped up. And I hadn't opened it maybe ever, but it had ended up in our basement of broken ceramic horses that he had made that I just loved. And so I, I put those into this mix of the um, flooded <laughs> Florentine painting. Um, cycle that I had looked at, and then through many revisions, this is what ended up. Um, and the, the other two paintings here are paintings in, in progress. Okay. I must introduce Lula Bell, who also appears in the middle painting. Um, Lula Bell is on extended loan from Menka Torgerson, who was the former and the original um, executive director here. Um, at the point when Ava entered this um, wonderful space. Um, and Little Bell belonged to a, a Bence's husband, Clifford West, who was a wonderful painter. And many of us studied with uh, Clifford. And uh, so she has meaning for me beyond the fact that she's just any um, mannequin that I might have gotten online because she belonged to Clifford and I she's I think a 30s girl and she reminds me of 30s films and uh, she also reminds me you know of the way my mother might have dressed at that period. And this is a, a more recent painting. Um, as I mentioned I have a, a lot of trouble 
this painting has, has been in the works for maybe three years. And what I tend to do when I get stuck is they'll go back into the racks and then I'll pull them out and maybe the fresh eye might give me um, the new inspiration. Um, sometimes, sometimes not. Um, now this one I repainted just like a day ago and it had sort of gotten stuck. Um, earlier what I had done, because I always had the, I was interested in having um, the mannequin sitting in this um, butterfly chair, which I find sort of an interesting 50s style chair. It's got a nice, lot of nice curves and things that make it interesting. Um, painting. And, and in some ways you might regard this also as a still life since this is not a real person, but this is an object. Yeah. Um, but I had, at that point, I had a, before, uh, two days ago when I did a major change on this, I had this chair in a different attitude and it, had a, it, was, a, it was over here where the red was coming in at the edge and then there was another figure over here and I decided to replace the figure instead with a dog because I was having trouble um, dealing with two figures, um, particular ones since one of them was a mannequin. So, um, and when I get stuck, sometimes what I do is I'll, um, I have a lot of colored pencils and I like to work on tracing paper and I make a little colored sketch until I find something that sort of works and um, then I'll blow that up. And so I took a, a big leap and m moved this whole figure um, to the right in this and, and that also allowed me to move the dog into this space to have the dog overlapping the chair here, which seemed important spatially. Um, when I'm painting, I'm thinking both about this, the subjects and, and representing them, but also about you know how they impact the abstract space. And uh, with you know modern art, one of the things we think about is we we we, we want to honor the what you would call honor the plane. You want them to be flat as well as and work in a two-dimensional uh, design as well as having a three-dimensional um, feeling of depth. And, and so that's what I'm trying to do. And so um, as I was painting this, um, the, the figure and the dog seemed to work fairly well, but I'm still was struggling with what to do with the background. Um, and so what I, I started with is I wanted to reassert the, the flatness in the plane. So I just put a bar in here. And I, it might have been that that bar also, as you notice, goes sort of straight through that leg. So you're also looking for vectors in the painting that you can you know, use to um, try to organize your painting. And then I you know, just ended up with this shape. Uh, it, it turned out to be somewhat of a window. I don't know what meaning that might have. <laughs> um, but I'm, this, this painting is coming along. I, I felt like I had made a, uh, a good choice in um, painting out the painting that was behind this and coming up with this newer version. Hi, uh, I'm Jim Jordan, a painter and draftsman. Um, I was for many years an art historian, about 50 years. The last 30 years or so, I was um, uh, taught art history at Dartmouth College. Uh, I was, uh, my, my field was early 20th century. I retired in 2012, and after a couple of years, began to draw and paint again. I had trained as an artist in the 1950s, uh, in the Midwest, and then I left the studio for 50 years. Uh, my wife, with whom I share the studio, said it would be okay if I joined her in the studio. She had room for me, and uh, so I managed to use half her studio 
uh, now and to stay out of the way as well. Um, and uh, it's been a wonderful place to work here. I had known Ava mostly as a gallery goer before, and uh, it's a wonderful place to work up here. Um, this is one of the nicest studios in terms of light that I've, I've ever seen. You've had a long and accomplished career as a scholar and professor of art history. Um, how has your academic background in art history influenced your approach to creating art? That's a really good question, and I think about it all the time. Um, the reason I became an art historian was, was my love of the arts, and that was the driving motive in my teaching as well. Um, so that uh, that's the kind of new that goes all the way through is the same whether I'm wearing my hat as an art historian or as a draftsman painter. Um, it's influenced me because I am aware of the sweep of history. I'm um, in the 21st century. I'm very much aware that I'm a 20th century person. And um, I look back to the, um, uh, the great period, particularly early 20th century now, a hundred years ago and um, contemplate the great developments and strides forward to people like Picasso and Matisse and those early days. And um, my thoughts about that do, do much, much influence me, particularly my thoughts about Cubism, which is the key stylistic feature of the 20th century. And my work is still much involved in Cubism as its spatial structure. The relationship between drawing and painting is an ongoing everyday matter for me, and I uh, work in them both interchangeably uh, always. Um, if I get stuck in a painting, I'll take a couple of days off to draw. Um, if I undertake a long campaign of drawing and reach a stopping point, it's usually because I realize um, I'm ready to go to painting where I can develop ideas even further. You can see some of the pictures um, with the drawings that relate to them on the walls here. I don't necessarily look at one or the other while I'm working, but I, I do keep them around it. And then this current display shows the interrelationship pretty well, I think. They're different. Drawing is, you do them much more rapidly and you do not have to invest a great deal in materials. Um, traditionally, drawings are not thought to be as permanent. Um, paintings are uh, much slower to develop. They have an advantage over drawing that you can go backward in painting much more easily than you can in drawing. Particularly in pen and ink, drawing is a one-way process. You can't you can draw over, but it's difficult. In painting, all you have to do is scrape the old paint off and repaint, and you're, you're off and running with a brand new surface. So they work back and forth like that in a conversation all the time. So I sometimes do get questions about my subject matter, about from where it comes. Uh, the inspiration to begin an art project usually comes from memory. And I often start with a small scene from my childhood or, or youth uh, and um, draw on that for a while. Then comes a period of development in which I try to translate these images into forms that are suitable for painting. At that point, I also begin to search or a composition that will enable me to express meaning. Then after this long developmental process, back and forth between painting and drawing, if I'm successful, if I'm successful and finish the painting, I will have usually discovered something, some meaning I had not known before. Uh, what is it like sharing a studio space? Um, okay, well, um, we, we have some rules we don't always follow, and one is we're 
not allowed to comment on each other's work unless it's requested. <laughs> and, and that doesn't, you know, so that means both positive and negative because if, if you get used to saying, oh, that's a great painting, I really like what you did, then if someone doesn't say that, that's an implied criticism. So um, we try to not give any feedback whatsoever unless it's requested. We sometimes put up some little barriers between so we're not so distracted by what the other person is doing. Uh, but we work in parallel, so um, we don't necessarily uh, have to stare at each other. We're looking at the same wall, the same wall. But I guess, you know, if you're a, if you're a couple, you're used to dealing with each other. Um, and so you might not be comfortable if it was someone you didn't know that well, you mm -hmm. know, saying, well, would you mind turning the radio down or would you mind not? walking around so much right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we, we, can, we can say that kind of thing. Um, how are your art styles similar, and how are they different? Wow, that's an <laughs> interesting question. OK. Well, we both work but, in oil painting. Yeah, and that's, that's true. And that's important. We can share technical things uh, physically and things we discover technically, taking care of the hazardous substances, all that sort of thing easy to work to work together on that. Well, we had had a big, well, the critique group, which we probably should say a few words about, we had a group together, a uh, show together. The, uh, we're members of an eight painter critique group. And we had a show at ABA, I think Rachel described it uh, earlier, um, two or three years ago. And we each put in about 10, 12 paintings. And, um, uh, that was a big show for me. I very rarely show things. And so I'm, I'm not, I suppose sometimes I'll show some things, but I don't plan on it much. I mainly, mainly plan on doing the work, which is what I, what I want to do. Well, it, 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 it formed, um, I'm not sure the exact year, but it's, it's been about 20 years ago. And it started um, with a, a smaller group and when it started, I think most of the members um, had a studio here. So um, what we did is we would share a pizza to start out, have a little social session, and then we would have a sort of a peripatetic you know, walking tour of the studios. And so um, instead of people bringing their paintings here, we went around, around to each of the studios. Um, Later, there were members joined who didn't have studios here, so they, and now we bring most of the, the paintings in here. Um, we still share our um, pizza or maybe we're branched out a little bit on the food. So it's a, it's a nice social group. Um, it's almost become a family group um, it, because we've gotten to know each other and uh, we're very supportive of one another's artwork um, but I you know I think we we each have our def, uh, our definite style and uh, I think that critique groups are very important and I hope that there'll be more of them maybe forming within the building um, like a photographer's group or um, a, sc a sculpture group or potter's group so I, I think they're very important mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to share, either of you, about Ava, anything? Well, it's just, Ava's been terrific, and uh, I'm very pleased that there are lots of younger people that have recently moved in. I, I feel like there's been a, a, a turnover. Um, now we're, we're the oldest ones here. Um, but uh, it's, it's just a great place to be. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's wonderful to be up here in this space. And uh, I, I can't imagine, I, I just feel very fortunate um, to have this activity mm -hmm. and to have a, a wonderful place to come every day. Yeah. This is also a very special building. And I, we think about that a lot. We're, neither of us are from New England. We moved here in middle, middle life. 
Uh, and Ava Building is really old New England, old industrial New England. And we get a sense of identity with uh, all the generations of workers that occupied this building. We sometimes find needles from the former yeah. sewing shop caught in the cracks between the boards and the floorboards. Yeah, yeah. You think, this could have been here for 150 years, you know. And, the, uh, and it's um, a, a real sense of, um, of um, joining something that's ongoing in Lebanon. And the, this was the this was the mainly the cutting floor, and these big tables that are in here are left over, and uh, it's you know it's great. And when when I first moved in, these were three were connected and they went down the middle. And as you're cutting your canvas on the table, you realize you know you're part of history. You used to be cutting overalls on these tables. <laughs>